Let's move on to 4A semi-state. Bishop Dwenger going on the road for a 7:30 kick at South Bend St. Joe's. This is a Snyder team, or excuse me, this is a Dwenger team. Played very well defensively last week, but only beat Plymouth 8-0. Um, and you're talking about a St. Joe's team who their record wasn't all that impressive coming into the playoffs, but they've yeah. been able to kind of hit their stride in the postseason, play well. Going to Lowell and beating Lowell at their place this deep in the postseason, no easy task. They were able to do it. What do you see as being the biggest keys Friday night for South Bend St. Joe's and for Bishop Dwinger in that game? Yeah, this is huge. There always seems to be one team every year that goes into the postseason with multiple losses. And, you know, South Bend St. Joe's was 4-5 and five entering the postseason, and that now all of a sudden they're sitting 8-5 and five and went away from the state title game. So that was very eye-opening to a lot of people last week, beating Lowell undefeated number one at their place, 7-6. to six. Uh, just did not allow a Lowell, a Lowell team that was just tremendous offensively all year to get going. So I think that is the one concern you have going in is DeWanger. Are they going to be able to uh, offensively create plays? And, you know, they really weren't able against Plymouth. They, they scored eight, but their defense played tremendously well. Can If, it, if it's a similar game, a similar grinded out game, uh, it can go either way. So it's going to be a tremendous challenge on Friday. We talked about during the Snyder Kokomo segment, those two teams had played three times in the Kurt Tippmann era. These two teams haven't played since 1992, so there is no level of familiarity. Does that work more in anyone's favor, do you think, at this point? I don't think so. I think it's both. They, they, they both have an unfamiliarity with, with both of each other, so I just don't think it's going to be much of an issue. Um, it's just both teams are kind of going in blind. They're studying tape all week to try to figure out what the other team does well. And so I think it's, it's a lot of learning on the fly this week by the team. So we'll see. Defensively, how happy are you if you're the Dwinger coaching staff? You throw a shutdown. Anytime you do a shutdown in the playoffs, but especially deep, when you play a team that has had offensive success like Plymouth had leading up to the Dwinger game, how pleased are you with that? And then what are you focusing on this week? Because South Bend St. Joe's doesn't throw it a ton. Yeah. But if you took a look at the numbers, uh, Tony Carmola, 139 yards last week, but nine of those completions were for first down. So... It wasn't like they were taking chunk yardage, but they were they were converting third downs and making plays in the air when they had to. Yeah, and Tony Carmolo, Carmola, I think he has 29 total touchdowns. He's a runner as well, so a real dual threat guy for for St. Joe. Uh, that is kind of the primary focus for that Dwanger off or defense, in my opinion. I think they really have to account for him, not allow him to get out of the pocket and make some plays, because I think uh, looking at it, he is the guy to make that offense go. Um, I guess conversely, you can look at it. Well, St. Joe only only scored seven points against Lowell, so you're thinking, well, a, a Dwanger defense that's just continued to get better throughout the season pitches a shutout should have some reasonable success on Friday. But um, I expect another real low-scoring physical game on Friday. If you're Bishop Dwanger, what do you need to do to be more effective offensively? Obviously, Plymouth's defense had a lot to do with it last week, but you take a look at this. This is a team that limited Lowell to six points. Uh, Lowell missed a PAT. They missed a couple of field goals. So obviously, you know, maybe some distractions on special teams as well. Um, what do you need to do offensively to get things rolling, get Amon Clark rolling, get Blake Pacelli rolling against this defense that has played so well here in the postseason? I think it's Blake Pacelli. I think the, the pressure is going to be on him on Friday. He has stepped up in big spots before this season. And I think the biggest, it is the biggest challenge for him on Friday. He needs to step up spread that, that defense out, thin them out, go deep, go vertical, go over the top. You cannot just rely on Amon Clark to do everything in this game. And Blake Pichelny has done tremendously in, in, in previous games when they've needed him to make plays. I think that is the key for DeWanger on Friday is that vertical passing game, being able to move the ball. Because I don't think there's going to be a lot of running room for DeWanger against St. Joe on Friday. If you had to... If you had to put the odds on this, what, what do you think this is, is going to turn into? I mean, what kind of game do you see it going to be? Who do you think is, is going to win? Because I, I would say Dwinger by, say, like 10. You say 10? I'm thinking like, you know, a 14-13 a game or a 17-14. Really? I think it was going to be low scoring. And, you know, you look at beating Lowell last week. Does that give St. Joe tremendous confidence going into this week, or does it give them overconfidence mm. going into this week? Because, you know, they slayed the dragon. They slayed the, the favorite in 4A. Number one, yeah. Number one. So how do they react? Okay, now they're going home. Is it, is it okay, now we just beat the, the big guy, now we can kind of coast a little bit? Or are they still going to be locked in and engaged on Friday? So uh, that is the key, I think, or one of the keys, I think, is to how St. Joe comes out to play Dwanger. All right. 